the bearing retainer and the rear bearing. Now the rear bearing isn't, isn't going to want to go on all the way right there. You can press it on. Um, this is one of those instances where I typically don't just because this is kind of a big awkward assembly and it's easier to uh, drive it down. Driving the bearing on can be as simple as just a few taps with a brass rod side to side until the bearing seats mostly there you can usually tell by the sound of it whether you're striking home or not and that sounds pretty much home all right we shouldn't have to remove this bearing off of here again unless we fail to meet this requirement for our sleeve on the second gear all right so the main shaft assembly is complete next assembly to be put together is going to be the main gear all right the main gear is going to consist of a washer, sealed bearing, and snap ring. Now, this one came with two snap rings, one thicker than the other. You should use the snap ring that fits your groove. So, if you need this thick snap ring instead of the thin one, by all means use that. And the last part of the assembly is going to be this snap ring, which goes around this groove on your bearing. This is a sealed bearing part number SKF 6206-2RSNR slash CE okay I've had this bearing for a number of years I thought I would replace it but I'm not going to it's never been used it's brand new but it is 11 years old um, we're going to install it on here the uh, there's several different techniques one would be to refrigerate the main gear and then install it um, heating the bearing I prefer to just press it on using the arbor press or the shop press which I have one back here that I've borrowed alright so we're gonna press this on I'm going to put a little bit of lubricant on the inside of it just to help it slide down better. This washer, let's see if you can see it well, okay, it has a stepped shoulder, okay. The stepped shoulder has got to go away from the bearing. If you install this with that shoulder up against the bearing, and this one appears to be just slightly bent, and it is. If you install this up against the bearing like this then when it runs it's going to create friction along this outside and it's going to melt this whole thing so do not install this with the shoulder up against the bearing install it like this so that it sits just slightly proud of the bearing okay got it set up in the press we're going to do is press it in. the shoulder sticks out proud of the bearing you need to make sure that you do not catch on the shoulder when pressing it on you 
you can only ride on the center race of the bearing. We're ready for our snap ring and our snap ring. The bearing, the, the washer rotates on the gear without touching the bearing and that's the crucial part that we need it. Once you've managed to get the bearing pressed onto the main gear, you've inspected it to make sure it's good of course in your first earlier inspections. Now we need to install the snap ring. Okay, we're going to use our thick one. There is a thin one that came with it, but it will allow too much free movement. We don't want that bearing to be able to shift in and out on the main gear. So we're going to use the thickest one that came with the kit. All right. Okay, that snap ring's installed. This is the one that's much easier to install. All right, that snap ring's installed. Now, something you want to check on this at this point, um, most people never think to do it or look at it, but uh, I have found there's several people out there who had difficulty with um, their front bearing retainer leaking when they got done. Okay, they got everything installed and looked at it and the bearing retainer was leaking from the front. All right, what you want to do is slide your bearing retainer down on there and make sure that your snap ring that holds it in isn't standing out proud of the bearing retainer. It can stand just a hair, maybe a thousandth or so, but that's it. You want it to fit snug. Anything more than that, you're going to end up having to install a thicker gasket on it when you put it on or to keep it from leaking. All right, now we're going to talk about something here that I told you I was putting a sealed bearing. Here's a sealed bearing. Why do I want to put a sealed bearing? Because what the T90 transmission uses for a seal has been and always will be considered a joke. All right, this is the front seal. It's a piece of felt with a piece of rubber on it. Okay, that piece sits right like this on the shaft and then it spins inside here against this surface. All right. What's to keep the oil in there? Just that little bit of rubber seal. All right? So I've never felt comfortable. I've never been very successful at installing the factory seals and having them not leak. Um, so what I'm doing on this particular transmission is I'm installing the sealed bearing. All right? Now, if you're going to install a sealed bearing, first off, if you have... One of the transmissions for at 226, you're going to have to seal up the main gear. If you look, there's a hole right here in the main gear. All right, that hole feeds all the way through and feeds the pilot bearings. Feeds the pilot bearings. Actually, the pilot bearings are being fed from the outside. That oil is then pumped through the hole here in the front right here it's pumped through that hole which then is supposed to return through this oil return hole so you've got this gear spinning oil is slinging out to the inside 
of the bearing retainer. It's supposed, the oil is supposed to be held inside by this seal and then it's supposed to leak back into the transmission through here. I don't do that. I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is use a sealed front bearing, which you've seen. We're going to use this sealed front bearing and we are going to seal up this hole in the case. With this hole sealed in the case, now fluid can't transfer out into that bearing retainer. With no oil in the bearing retainer, it's not going to leak and drip down, get all over your clutch and pressure plate, and drip out of the bottom of your transmission bell housing. So we are going to install the sealed case in here to take care of that. Also, I don't think we've dropped down far enough. Maybe we have, but I don't think so. We'll see. All right. Uh, okay, so we're going to seal up this hole right now using Forma gasket. Okay, it's a non-hardening gasket sealer that will seal up the hole. When we put the cover on it, it's going to seal it permanently. That will stiffen up. It will never really get hard, but it was always stiffen up inside there, and that's going to seal that. So that's going to take care of the, tran the transmission leaking. Hopefully, we're also going to use that form of gasket here in this hole. Let's go ahead and do that so we don't forget it later. Okay. All right. So the end of that is sealed. We've sealed up the end of the case. We have built up the cluster gear. We have built up the main shaft. We have built up the main gear. The only thing we've really got left to install in here, except all those parts that are already pre-built, is going to be the reverse idler gear. Up in this corner, we have to install the reverse idler gear. All right. It's as simple as lubricating the bushing inside with some assembly lube. Sliding it into the hole. Now if you look, <laughs> this boss right here goes the same as the one that's on the cluster gear. All right, they made, made up. So all you have to do is slide it into its spot like so. Once that's in place, lubricate your reverse idler gear. Slide it into place. And you remember how I showed you a while ago to line up that T-bar? Well, you're going to want to do the same thing with your reverse idler gear. For now, though, you're just going to want to leave it slightly just one tap in is all you want to do. Just one little tap in just to hold it in place while everything gets mounted. All right, reverse idler gears there. It's time to install the oil collector. We want to put the oil collector in and get it to slide in around the shaft. There we go. And the key is going to be getting it installed and getting the um, main gear in. Now many of these have been clearanced right here. They'll shave this off. Uh, this one has been there. I'm just going to leave it. It seems to have worked fine all these years. We're going to slide it in and push it down and around as far as it'll go to get it out of the way.